and as you see not working properly we'll have to change the component there's no way around it nice to have you all back the first 10 seconds were from a previous video when we were measuring the voltage of the potentiometer with this 560 sl from 87 which is mine results came out to be insufficient they're not the way they should be therefore today's topic how to change this component which is related to the baffle plate the right way do's and don'ts another thing you can become a member of this channel which provides you with free beer popcorn and a front row seat you get to watch the newest videos before they officially get released and without ads in between with a mere 2.99 euros you can support my channel and the overhead with this workshop here hang on right after introduction i'm getting my hands real dirty Here we go, two potentiometers in a price range of a 20 euros to a 200 euros, like this one here. Low quality, you can tell right away. The touching tips of the brushes are tiny, cowboy soldering chops. Please see enlarged picture on the left hand side. This one here is a Bosch. See where the brushes are touching. There is high quality with high conduction brass pins in comparison to these probably tin tips. And since this is a quite important component of this key A Chetronic, I definitely recommend the Bosch spare part to avoid trouble and rough idle in the future. Off we go. Let us get started. Position of the baffle plate potentiometer with a 560 SL of 87 is right here. Before you start, step 1, disconnect the battery first of all. Then pull at that plug here with 3 pins. Right here, do it gently, do not break anything. We are lucky at some other models, you would have to unbolt high pressure fuel lines first to get to the potentiometer. When you have a M103 engine, you would have to remove many pipes prior to this job. Next step, take a felt marker and mark the position of the old potentiometer because you can alter the position with two screws to change the response of the baffle plate. See what I mean? The fine adjustments will be done with the two before mentioned screws, but it is really important to mark the position anyway. Next step, take a small Phillips and gently remove the covers of the screws. The old plastic covers will probably brittle. We will replace them afterwards with new ones. Here you see the two screws sitting on elongated seats, so you can slide the housing of the potentiometer upwards and downwards for some millimeters to alter the position of the brushes on the counter contacts. Same procedure with the left hand side screws right here. We will remove them all. Well, 
we have now unbolted the component, lift it off carefully, do not slide it off, but lift it off. Remove the old ceiling as well. This here is the old one. I will show you a blow up picture right away. On these contact tracks, the brushes are sliding. Easy to see a lot of wear with this one. This was surely the cause for wrong results while measuring the component. Next step, we now carefully put on our high-end component to its place. The rubber seal comes with the spare part. See the text marker? Can you see it? Now put it on horizontally and carefully. Don't shake it. Make sure you do not damage or touch the inside of the component. I press it gently against the housing and adjust it to the marks that I have left prior to removal of the old component. I now take the screws but tighten them only semi to allow the component to be brought to exact the same position as the old one before. component has been bolted on semi-tight in a manner to alter its position right here. I have connected my multimeter to pin 1 and to measure tension while engine is running at around 80 degrees Celsius or 170 Fahrenheit. Disconnect or switch off radio, lights, footwell illumination etc. We will need some 0.7 volts. To get there we need to manually alter the position of the component. All other electrically consuming things switch them off. To have an accurate determination of your idle rotations do it with a multimeter and the X-Test socket box. There is a video about this topic in English as well on this channel, because it has to be measured precisely. We now start the engine. We now alter position of component to change position of brushes touching the counter contacts. Press downwards to decrease tension engine has some 80 degrees Celsius, the display shows some 0.69 to 0.71 volts. This is ideal, this is what we want, I earned myself a beer for sure. I now tighten the screws. The fine tuning jobs are done, new Bosch potentiometer is working perfectly, just spend the 200 euros on it. We now place new covers on the screws to prevent corrosion. Task completed, job done. This is it, 
No academic education needed to get this job done. Easy access for a change with a M117 engine in an otherwise completely cramped engine bay. If you have a car with a M103 engine, there is a high pressure fuel line to be removed first and a fuel pressure accumulator, therefore no smoking while doing this job. Let me hammer away on one fact. Use a Bosch component and do not damage the inside of the component. Remove it horizontally, not vertically, to prevent damage. We are talking about a 200 euros. If you have a more modern car, depending on model and year of make, your cockpit display may show you a fault code. Just ignore it. When the job is completed for good, disconnect the battery for at least 20 seconds. The fault code should be gone. Otherwise, repeat for at least a minute. You will find the playlist to the chapter Kiai Chetronic further below in the description. Hope you have liked it. Hope to see you around soon for the next topic. Let's see what that might be.